Well, hey everybody. Um, believe it or not, uh, we haven't actually made a video yet for Apollo Moon Landing, even though it's a pretty fun uh, activity, one of my favorites now. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of give a walkthrough of it. Um, and uh, the intent of this activity is that uh, I designed it so that it can go even into, say, a high school physical science class. So there's, uh, if you're familiar with the bellicose birds activity, this is uh, a bit like bellicose birds, but there is no uh, trigonometry in it whatsoever. Um, we still have the, yeah, the other parts of it are, are pretty much the same, um, but uh, hopefully it's, it's a little bit simpler. Um, it also has a lot in common with um, bonk.io, if, you, if you've done bonk.io. Uh, I'm not necessarily going to say that you need to do bonk.io before this, um, but if you've done bonk.io, you, bonk you'll, you'll, uh, you'll recognize this pretty quick. Um, now, the, the reason I created this, I, so I created this activity uh, last year um, when I noticed, remembered, etc., that uh, summer 2019 was the 50th anniversary of the, of the moon landing. Um, I actually grew up uh, on uh, the west coast of Florida, so on the Gulf of Mexico end, but uh, I could sometimes see, sh you know, I got to go see shuttle launches when I was growing up. The shuttle would often fly overhead on its way down uh, to land. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely a, a product of, uh, you know, admiring the nation's space program. Uh, and so the least I could do was to create sort of a fun activity to, to kind of, uh, to, to, to remember uh, that, that tremendous achievement. Uh, I think it was July 1969 is, is when, uh, July 1969 is when the Apollo 11 astronauts landed. Um, so this is the Apollo moon landing. Um, you, you do kind of need to finish Accelerate the Blob to do this one. So move the blob, accelerate the blob. So if you haven't finished those, this might be a little bit unfamiliar. Um, but the first thing is just to kind of open up the code and see, see what it's about. Um, so this is the kind of thing you'll see. Um, and it's 50-something lines of code. Um, not too terribly bad. Often you want to... Uh, click this little gray arrow thing to see more of the code. Um, but I'll go ahead and um, hit play and see what it does. And so we have a nice little Apollo lander thing here. By the way, the circle is there just in case it takes a while for the picture to load. I just wanted to make sure there was something there to look at. And the problem with this code at, at present is that it, it works, but there's no gravity. So it's almost like we're in free space. And the one of the tensest moments of the Apollo 11 mission, which is really what this activity is about, is the moment where they had to land uh, the lander on the moon. Um, and they only had so much fuel to do it. According to legend, they, they almost ran out of fuel when they were trying to land the thing. Um, and certainly this was part of the inspiration for the Lunar Lander game, which was a computer game. Uh, later, later, I think it was an arcade game. Um, but in any case, uh, this game is, is interesting, but it's not going to be so much fun until we, add, um, until we add gravity to it. So again, so in terms of the variables here, this is overall pretty similar to Accelerate the Blob. We've got positions and velocities, uh, x and y positions, uh, x and y velocities for our little object here. Um, as in Accelerate the Blob, we have uh, accelerations in the x and y direction. Um, and then the, uh, the arrow keys control the force. So the arrow keys, uh, again, so this is similar to the bonk.io activity if you've done that. Um, but the arrow keys are going to control the force. And then uh, the acceleration is the force divided by the mass. And we use that acceleration to calculate the velocities up here. But what we want to do is we want to calculate, we want to include gravity into this thing. And so in a second I'll go back over to this tab. And the thing we're going to be looking at is this spot right here, right? So we have, uh, so then whenever you're calculating the net force, you're always saying, right, what are all the forces that are here? Um, and right now the only force is the, is the rocket thrust, right? So let's zoom that over there. Um, the only force is the rocket thrust. And there's nothing else. And so if we're going to add other forces to it, um, we might want to add something down here. And gravity is in the y direction. So if you notice, I've made this coordinate axis sort of like this. So the origin's in the, the bottom left here. 
So gravity is down, right? And so the first thing we got to do is to add things like uh, g and put in the weight, stuff like that. So, um, so here we go. Step two. The first thing we got to do is add gravity to it. Now we're not going to put g equals 9.8 because 9.8 is for the Earth, right? And we're not on. We're not trying to land on the Earth. Uh, we're trying to land on the Moon. And so the Moon has uh, gravity that is one sixth of the strength of the Earth. Uh, at least the acceleration. Um, and so I'm going to take this, I'm just going to click that button. That copies this code to the clipboard. You can also like try to highlight this thing too, but you're liable to accidentally catch something else. So I'd, rec I'd recommend just clicking on that button. And now I can go up into the code. And I want to add this. It says add it to the beginning of your code. So I'll go ahead and do that. And uh, so this is what I would call the beginning of the code. This is where all the variables are defined. I'm going to, I'm going to do control V to paste it there. Now my code is not necessarily going to do anything different yet because I just added a variable to it. I haven't actually done anything with this variable. It's still doing the same thing as it was before. So that's the same. Um, but at least I have a variable in there to represent uh, the gravitational constant on the moon. Um, now, if we wanted to, we could just say, all right, well, ay is equal to g, and that would be the end of it. Um, but the problem with that is that we wouldn't be able to do the thrusters. That, the thing would just fall to the moon, it would crash, and that's not very fun. Um, so instead, what we have to do is we have to think about how gravity is, is a force. Um, it's not just an acceleration, it's a force, and uh, the force of gravity is the weight. Okay? And so what we're going to do is we're going to take this, so that line that we have, F net Y, the, the net force in the Y direction, instead of just having F Y there, which is the thrust from the rockets, we're going to have F Y plus the weight. And then our job is to figure out what the big question mark thing is. Okay, So I'm going to copy that code into there. And I actually have to erase some of the old code, because the old code was too simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to go ahead and do Control V to paste this into there. Um, now the code is not going to like the question marks. I've yet to see a computer code like question marks. They don't like uncertainty, questions, ambiguity, none of that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and erase this because we don't need this anymore because we've replaced it like so. Question: What what goes here for the weight? Well, the weight is um, the weight is always the mass times gravity. So sometimes I like to say that um, the only way to lose weight is to um, reduce your mass or to change planets, right? Because if you change planets, like your weight on the moon is, is one sixth of, it, of what it is on the Earth. And the reason for that is because your weight is the mass times gravity. Presumably your mass is the same on the moon as it is here. Um, but we're going to do MASS times G. Um, I would discourage you from doing m times g, even though that's usually what you would do in, in say, a physical, physics or physical science class. But uh, in this code, I have decided to define m as being, uh, defining the mass as mass. Okay? Um, so that goes there. And now we can kind of factor this in and see what it does. So I'm going to go ahead and click this here. And here we go. So now. So now we're accelerating towards the ground. Uh-oh. So that did something. I didn't even touch it. It just started falling. There we go. So that looks like there's some kind of gravity there. Let me try to drag this thing over so we can see it a little bit better. Um, yeah, it's a nice little feature of this editor is you can click this thing and drag it over. It's kind of nice. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click this thing. And now it's if I press up arrow, I can actually kind of slow the descent. And you know I can also you know go over this way and watch gravity deflect me over there. Now the Apollo 11 astronauts they had to be very careful about this because they only had so much fuel. If they ran out of fuel, they you know they crash on this on the surface of the moon. Um, but if I do it gently enough, I can just sort of try to try to get to the surface of the moon with pretty low speed. Now the problem with our code at this point is that we can do this, but there's nothing necessarily to check to see if 
to see if we're at about the ground level of the moon. And so there's no way, to, for example, to win the game. And so the next thing we have to do is, is to add in some code uh, to do that. Um, but so far it looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and back, go back to the step-by-step, -step and uh, there's an, uh, another nice little copy code button. It basically says that, um, so this code says that if y is less than 0, so if I go back here, so if, so this is the, the origin of our coordinate system, right? So this is y equals 0 here. So if y is less than 0, then clearly you've crashed into the surface of the moon. Um, and what we want to do is we want to place this, um, let's see, we want to place this uh, maybe down here. So it's where it says add more graphics. Um, so we're going to place that down there. And if, if y is less than 0, it's going to say, it's not going to say game over. It's, it's going to say, Houston, we have a problem, um, which is what they would have said. It said, Houston, we have a problem. We've crash landed on the moon. Um, and so now we fall below the screen. There we go. It's Houston, we have a problem. That's not good. So we can at least lose the game. By the way, this no loop thing is, is what ends this. So instead of saying like exit or something or end, it says no loop. In other words, it stops the loops that the draw function is making. This draw function is going 60 times a second. So 60 times a second, it updates the acceleration and position and the velocities and all that stuff. Um, all right. So we can lose, but now we got to be able to win. And uh, I have a nice another copy code thing here for winning. Um, and so if this, the way that this thing works is, is basically saying if your y value is very close to 20, very, very close to 20, which you kind of have to hover around 20. Um, and by the way, the screen goes from 0 to 500. So a y value of 20 is like almost all the way down at the bottom. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and paste that into there like so. Okay? So if, if this is true, then write to the screen the eagle has landed and then set everything still so that it's not like continuing to fall down, in which case you would lose. So, so I can go ahead and do that, see if it works. Let me drag this thing over. All right, here we go. So I can still lose, right, if I don't fire any thrusters. But let me try to see if I can gently land this thing. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. The eagle has landed safely. Okay? Um, so it works. 